Exploring the differences between a dragon and a wyvern. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry and this is Marvelous Videos. Giant reptilian winged beasts have been part of various laws and mythologies, whether in the forms of dragons or wyverns. But do you know the difference between the two? Dragon and wyvern are terms that are often used interchangeably, but they're actually very different creatures. Here is a complete breakdown of how to distinguish dragons from wyverns and what makes them so unique. Keep watching. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. Dragons and wyverns have different mythological origins. Even though from afar they might look quite similar, let's face it, if you see a dragon or a wyvern, you'd be running from it as fast as possible and not trying to get a closer look. But apart from appearances, which we'll come to, it's important to note that dragons and wyverns have completely different mythological origins. Both dragons and wyverns have been integral parts of folklore and culture all over the world, stretching from the east to the west. In some cultures, they're seen as powerful, wise and all-knowing, while in others, they're seen as embodiments of evil and destruction. As far as dragons are concerned, their most prominent mythological presence is probably in Chinese culture. However, the creature has evolved as part of folklore in Europe, Australia and the Americas as well. Interestingly, the first accounts of draconic beasts describe them as looking like enormous snakes. Draconic animals are mentioned initially in ancient Near Eastern mythologies and can be found in Mesopotamian art and literature. Nearly all Indo-European and Near Eastern mythology have tales of storm gods fighting enormous serpents. The Chinese mythological monster Lung has come to be associated with the modern understanding of the word dragon. Many East Asian deities and demigods had dragons as their personal rides or pets. Dragons were also associated with the Chinese emperor, who was the only person allowed to put their emblems on his home, clothes or other personal items during the latter Chinese imperial era. In the hierarchy of Chinese animals, the Chinese dragon is at the top. Although its progenitors can be found depicted on Neolithic and Bronze Age ceremonial vessels, their exact origins are unknown. Dragons are believed to have control over the weather in China. The source of the Chinese traditions of dragon dancing and dragon boat racing is related to the mythical creature's links with rain. Since rain and dragons are intimately related, drought is said to be brought on by a dragon's sluggishness. In Chinese writings, it's thus common to see prayers that invoke dragons to bring rain. It's understood that dragons are often seen as gods or cosmic deities with immense power. A version of this can be found in the famous Dota Netflix series Dragon's Blood, where dragons are the pillars of the universe, having control over the fundamental elements. Dragons play a significant role in many ancient Chinese customs. For instance, during the Spring Festival and Lantern Festival, locals will usually assemble a 16-foot-long dragon out of paper, grass, cloth and bamboo strips, which they will then dance and parade through the city. This ritual's original intent was to induce favorable weather and a robust harvest. The Chinese culture has also influenced the perception of dragons in many Asian nations including Korea, Vietnam, Japan and other places. The dragon has traditionally served as China's national emblem and the yellow dragon banner of the Qing dynasty contributed to the perception that China resembles a dragon in many European nations. The Korean dragon resembles other East Asian dragons like Chinese and Japanese ones in many respects. It evolved a longer beard as compared to the Chinese dragon. In Korean mythology, Dragons are primarily kind spirits associated with water and farming who are frequently regarded as bringers of clouds and rain. As a result, it's believed that many Korean dragons lived in rivers, lakes, oceans or even deep mountain ponds. In Korean folklore, there are many stories that speak about people traveling to underwater realms, particularly the underwater palace of the Dragon King. Japanese dragon mythology combines local legends with Chinese imports concerning dragons. The majority of Japanese dragons are water deities connected to rains and bodies of water, just like those in other parts of Asia. They're often portrayed as enormous, wingless, serpentine monsters with claws. It was thought that metal could be used to pacify or expel dragons. It's said that Kino Suryuki and Nita Yoshisada both threw metal mirrors into the sea in order to placate the sea dragon god at Sumiyoshi and Sagami respectively. However, dragon mythology isn't limited to the east. In the west, 
both in the Greek and Roman civilizations, depictions of massive serpents whose names can be loosely translated into the word dragon are also abundant. However, there is a shift in how people perceive dragons when one moves from the east to the west. While in the east, dragons were seen to be wise, powerful and cosmic beings associated with creation, the idea in the west shaped up to be quite different. Western European folklore, references to Near Eastern European dragons found in the Bible, and the snake-like dragons of classical Greco-Roman literature were all combined to create the modern, Western image of a dragon during the Middle Ages. The fascination with dragons as living creatures peaked in Europe between the 11th and 13th centuries. Here, typically dragons are shown to live in rivers or to have a cave or a lair underneath. They're thought to have ravenous appetites and to be gluttonous and greedy. Due to the Book of Revelation's descriptions of Satan as a dragon, they're frequently linked to the devil. Coming to more scientific explanations behind dragons, according to various sources, it's thought that when dinosaur fossils were first discovered, people in earlier times might have misunderstood them to be the remains of the hulking reptilian beasts. In fact, it's been recorded that Chang Tzu, a Chinese historian all the way back in the 4th century BCE, mistook a dinosaur fossil found in the region that is now known as the Sichuan province. This is the story in China, and while it may seem odd, a similar situation also played out in Africa and subsequently Europe. Nile crocodiles, which are native to sub-Saharan Africa, may have once had a more extensive range. By swimming across the Mediterranean to Italy or Greece, they may have given rise to European dragon stories. With mature individuals growing to a colossal length of 18 feet, they're one of the largest crocodile species. Unlike most others, they're also able to perform a maneuver known as the high walk, in which the trunk is raised off the ground. A huge, lumbering crocodile? Easily confused for a dragon. Many different kinds of monitor lizards, usually known as goannas, can be found throughout Australia. Large, ferocious creatures with razor-sharp teeth and claws play significant roles in traditional Aboriginal storytelling. According to recent studies, goannas may even create venom that causes bite wounds to become infected after an attack. These species may be to blame for the dragon myth, at least in Australia. Others contend that tales of dragons originated as a result of the discovery of megafauna like whales. Ancient people who came across whale bones would not have known that the animals lived in the sea, and the thought of such enormous creatures may have caused people to believe that whales were predators. Live whales spend up to 90% of their time underwater. Therefore, for the majority of human history, nothing was known about them. The most intriguing theory behind dragons actually includes a surprising animal, a person. Anthropologist David E. Jones makes the case in his book An Instinct for Dragons that the reason why dragon mythology is so pervasive across ancient societies is because human beings have an inbuilt dread of predators nurtured by evolution. Jones speculates that the trait of fearing large animals such as pythons, birds of prey and elephants has been programmed into hominids, much as the same way monkeys have been proven to have a fear of snakes and big cats. He contends that these enduring worries were commonly blended in folklore in more recent times to produce the dragon tail. Dragons thus have an incredibly detailed history. However, wyverns are also not that far behind. While dragons are more multicultural, wyverns are mostly European in origin as far as mythology is concerned. It's apparent from bestiaries and alchemy writings that wyverns were well known throughout Europe as early as the medieval period in the 5th century AD, despite the fact that the first wyvern representations have been lost to history. According to some experts, the wyvern may have evolved from Roman battle flags that the early Europeans would have seen as Roman armies moved further north. The fact that the word wyvern can be traced back to the Latin word vipera, which the Romans would have used, lends credence to this theory. Wyverns are thought to have first appeared on English war banners in the 9th century, when Wessex and Wales were each symbolised by a gold dragon. By the 16th century, several illustrious families in Wales and Wessex had included this small dragon as part of their coats of arms due to its appeal as a representation of bravery and strength. The dragonet was adopted as a logo by English businesses all around the country during the 19th century, and it's still used as a brand or mascot today. From a scientific perspective, wyverns, according to some cryptozoologists are evidence that extinct avian species like theropod dinosaurs coexisted with human societies 65 million years ago and may still do today. It can also be said that wyverns have a more scattered and ambiguous mythology in comparison to dragons. Unlike dragons which have a positive and cosmic presence, wyverns are exclusively seen to be evil and have been historically associated with war, pestilence and death. 
They're considered to be mean, treacherous and harmful creatures. In fact, wyverns are often thought to be a subspecies of the dragon. So, as far as mythology and the origins of their lore are concerned, the two creatures are decidedly different. Their appearance sets them apart. The two beasts are also quite different in appearance. Many people think that wyverns and dragons are related because of how similar their physical features are. Even while that may be the case, they're still completely separate species with distinct physical characteristics. The wyvern has a dragon's head, a forked tongue, a scaly neck and leathery wings, but it also has an eagle's two clawed feet. Their legs not only give them a distinctive appearance, but also a distinct way of moving, hopping, hovering and pouncing rather than crawling. It also has a long serpentine tail that is frequently represented as twisted or twined into itself to show the monster's extreme venomousness and destructive nature. The tails of wyverns also have a distinctive barbed end. According to some writings, this barb is actually a stinger that can inject a lethal quantity of poison, giving them a unique tool that dragons do not have. Other writings depict dragonettes that have evolved a more fish-like tail in order to adapt to semi-aquatic living. Coming to dragons, western and eastern ones have different features. However, they're still distinguishable from wyverns. Western or European dragons are typically portrayed as enormous reptiles with bat-like wings. Early European literature frequently depicts dragons with one, two, four or more legs. Dragons are usually portrayed as having four legs and are typically larger than the regular wyvern. While it's understandable that in some cases wyverns might be bigger than dragons, dragons in general as a species are much larger in size. They've been depicted as gigantic flying beasts, with some Chinese depictions even showing the earth resting on the back of a dragon. Yes, that's how big they can potentially be. On the flip side, wyverns are smaller and usually haunt forests and desolate swamps, preying on poor humans unlucky to be passing by. As opposed to the European form, eastern dragons are typically more snake-like and lack wings. Regardless of whether they have wings or not, they're regarded as majestic and swift flyers. Many have manes or dorsal spines in their depictions. While red and golden coloration is frequently used, eastern dragons are also portrayed in a variety of sizes, shapes and hues, with some resembling the fairies of other cultures. If we were to see a wyvern and an eastern dragon side by side, the difference between the two would be extremely apparent, since wyverns are dark in color and way more menacing to look at. Thus, if you're observant and happen to chance across either of these two creatures, now you'll be able to tell them apart, at the risk of being burnt to ashes if you take the chance. Another thing to note here is that while both creatures choose to live in wild lands where humans don't usually go, their preference of habitat is different. Dragons generally choose underground lairs, burrowing deep beneath the surface of the earth as can be understood from the various depictions of dragons in their caves and earthy lairs. Wyverns, on the other hand, prefer to build their lair in low, moist areas like swamps or around desolate pools and lakes, often deep inside confusing forests. The number of limbs establishes a fundamental difference. While they do have distinctive appearances, it might be tough to tell them apart from afar. However, one fundamental difference between the two species is the number of limbs they possess. To put it very simply, dragons have four legs, while wyverns have two. It's generally thought that since wyverns are a subspecies of dragons, they were created as the years went by and dragons devolved into these lesser creatures. This was largely due to their dwindling numbers and attacks from humans, which led to the dilution of their bloodline and the subsequent creation of the two-legged wyvern, often thought to be a distant cousin of the dragon. As far as the wyvern is concerned, their front limbs are attached to their wings, making them similar to arms. This is actually a sign of devolution, because it makes it easier for a knight or a brave villager to attack a wyvern because it can't move its wings away when it wants to use its front talons to attack or retaliate to a strike. One hit to its arms also serves as a blow to its wing, making this a major flaw that the wyvern possesses and the dragon doesn't. As a result of their front limbs and wings being fused, it's also in general tougher for them to move their wings, which makes them less adept at flying when compared to dragons. However, there is also an upside to only having two wings. It means that they're lighter and it's less cumbersome for them to move, making them faster and more agile when compared to dragons. However, and this isn't to confuse you further, different types of dragons also have different numbers of limbs. Since dragons have been depicted in all kinds of ways in both Western and Eastern mythology, they've been shown to have a varying number of limbs. Although 90% of the time they're shown to have four or more limbs, never fewer than four. 
Often, Chinese dragons are portrayed without wings and having four limbs, while there are other depictions showing dragons with six or eight limbs and more than one head as well. But as they have so many limbs, it's often assumed that they're great hulking creatures and are generally slower and less agile when compared to wyverns. One of the best comparisons is between a T-Rex and a Velociraptor. While the T-Rex is way more powerful, the Velociraptor is more frenzied and faster when it pursues its prey. Wyverns are generally weaker, but often more aggressive. Being the smaller and lighter versions of dragons, they're generally considered to be the weaker out of the two. However, don't underestimate wyverns. These creatures are thought to be so aggressive and dreadful that they supposedly pollute the earth upon which they tread. As they travel through an area, grass wilts and the place becomes barren. Fungus grows on the land and loathsome slime or distorted tadpoles and flounder-like creatures spawn. Due to their bad temperament, they're also inherently more aggressive and have repulsive personalities. Hence, even though they're lighter and smaller in size, they're considered to be more aggressive. They have a beaked mouth and also use that to attack if needed. In some adaptations and interpretations, they are also thought to have the ability to breathe out poison through their mouths unlike dragons who are famous for their ability to breathe fire. Their small size also allows them to be swift in battle, something that is tough for dragons due to their sheer size. Dragons, on the other hand, are much larger in size and are more powerful in many aspects. In fact, in various mythology and cultures, dragons are thought to be the most powerful creatures in existence. Their most iconic ability is, of course, that of breathing fire. Dragons have famously been depicted showering fire down on towns and villages like bright yellow rain from the skies, turning everything it touches to ash. Apart from this, dragons are also known to have impenetrable scales that make them invulnerable to most attacks. They also live for over a thousand years unless they're actively sought out and killed. They're thus incredibly strong and cause much more damage on a large scale. For example, while a wyvern would probably kill two or three humans that encroached upon its area due to its smaller size and stature, it wouldn't be able to decimate an entire town. A dragon, on the other hand, would be able to cause mass destruction due to its size and powers. Don't let this make you think that the wyvern is, by any means, a small creature. It's considered to be big enough for hunting rhinos and hippos. It's only in comparison to the mighty dragon that the wyvern is considered to be small. Also noteworthy is the fact that dragons are thought to possess magical and mystical powers and abilities, while wyverns are portrayed as lesser creatures, possessing only brute strength and speed. This also makes wyverns weaker in the larger scheme of things. While dragons often have a larger or a higher purpose, wyverns are just beastly predators. This could also also be why they're so aggressive and vile. If you're thinking that in a face-off between a dragon and a wyvern, the dragon is guaranteed to win, then think again. It's not always that a dragon will be able to overpower a wyvern. A wyvern can use its poison-injecting tail to seriously injure a dragon. They're also much nimbler and swifter when it comes to aerial battles. If a full-grown wyvern were to encounter a young or smaller dragon, it stands a very good chance of winning. So there's definitely a good chance that a wyvern may be able to overpower a dragon. However, if the dragon is one that's immune to poison, the wyvern will most likely meet a grisly end. Dragons are a lot noisier. Another fundamental difference lies in how much noise these creatures make and how they communicate with humans. Dragons are often seen as beings that hold elemental powers and the wisdom of the universe, and as such, it would be absurd if they weren't able to pass on their immense knowledge. Oftentimes in both mythology and modern pop culture, dragons have spoken to humans, often to knights, who they have considered to be worthy of this wisdom and knowledge. It's thus understood that dragons possess the power of speech and can speak to humans. Now, don't think that a dragon will just start conversing with you in English or in your native tongue, no. Dragons instead communicate with humans in a way that they convey messages that transcend the barriers of language. They're thought to be intelligent and intellectual creatures with the capability to give compelling speeches. This can be seen in the Dota Netflix series Dragon's Blood, where the massive elder dragon actually converses with a young dragon knight, who, understandably, is shocked to hear a dragon speak. However, it's not just speech. Dragons also make a lot of other noises, including roars and growls, especially when they're angry, making it clear that they're about to destroy entire towns and villages, so you'd better run. Wyverns, on the other hand, are silent. There are almost no recorded instances, whether it be mythology, fantasy or folklore, where wyverns have been known to be capable of speech. It's understood that they're opposed to communicating with humans, viewing them as nothing more than prey for their consumption. 
They're also thought to be less intelligent in comparison to dragons as they don't have cosmic wisdom or any knowledge of any sort for that matter. Further, even if we look at general noises, the wyvern is a much more silent creature and isn't shown roaring or growling. The fact that they don't make any noise is also what makes them a more ferocious predator because you're far less likely to realize that one is stalking you before it's too late. I am Dragons are more popular in pop culture. Everyone recalls at least one story where the brave knight fights the dragon and rescues the captive princess. This is because in pop culture, as stories evolved over the ages, dragons became the symbol of fantasy. Smaug from The Hobbit, a classic book by J.R.R. Tolkien, is among the most recognizable contemporary dragons. Dragons can also be found in J.K. Rowling's best-selling Harry Potter children's book series, A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin, and the hit TV show Game of Thrones based on it, are well-known popular works that feature dragons extensively. Dragons are also frequently used in the well-known Dungeons & Dragons D&D role-playing game system. Wyverns have also appeared in a variety of media. For instance, a wyvern works as the palace's doorkeeper in Neil Gaiman's Sandman novella. Wyverns can be found in the mythology of fantasy role-playing games like World of Warcraft and D&D. However, it's safe to say that dragons are more popular in pop culture and have a much larger presence. In fact, House of the Dragon is another major TV series that focuses on dragons and is immensely popular right now. In comparison, wyverns have been relatively neglected. However, it's not to say that they don't have a place in pop culture at all, since fantasy shows like The Witcher have often featured wyverns as terrible beasts that brave knights and men have to fight. All in all, despite their subtle and some not-so-subtle differences, these two creatures are indeed similar and often mistaken for one another. I mean, if you ever come across one of them, you won't be examining it to see if it's a dragon or a wyvern, and if you do, best of luck to you. However, as far as their depictions on screen are concerned, mythology fans and purists have always asked for a nuanced understanding of the two creatures from creators so that they're not mislabeled. Hopefully this video helped you understand how to distinguish between the two. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.